Okay, you guys, welcome to what's going to be a load of fun. And uh, it might be a little difficult because I won't be here to like really help you one on one hands on so much. So we're going to treat this last third of the lab as, you know, anything we can get out of this, which definitely will be something, um, is going to be awesome. And uh, my expectations that you guys are going to be able to master all these techniques and concepts as well as if we were face to face are, are not going to be as high. Uh, but you're going to be fascinated by the kinds of things that we do um, and what these microscopes are able to reveal about minerals in rocks. So I'm going to give you three videos. And um, in this first one, I'm just going to give you an overview of what the microscope does, kind of the, the principles behind it. And then I'm going to show you um, the details of the various parts of the microscope. And in the third video, I'm going to show you how to actually look at a thin section and what you would do to um, you know, actually place a thin section on the stage and, and uh, look at it in some different ways. So video number one is just an overview of, of how the microscope works. So this is, these are beautiful microscopes, by the way. They're old. I don't know when they were made. Um, but these are Olympus microscopes, um, which is a, a fabulous company for making microscopes. They still make microscopes, and they make uh, some of the best ones out there for research-grade microscopes. Um, the optics are excellent. Um, so there's really nothing. Uh, be careful with them. <laughs> you know, there's, there's nothing bad about this being an old microscope. Um, the way it works is this. Uh, we have a light source, and I'll turn the light source on. And it very simply creates a column of light that comes through a, a filter that's actually a polarizing filter down below. And um, it, then it goes through one lens right underneath the stage. And then the light comes up what's, through what's called the objective lens, or just the objective. And the objective is the main thing that you can change to, um, to change the magnification. Then the column of light goes through the, I don't even know what this is called, the, the tube. Um, and it goes through what's called the ocular, or the eyepiece. And uh, it is itself a, um, another lens. Um, most oculars are 10 power, but um, some of you might have microscopes that have interchangeable oculars, so you can even pull them out and, and change them. You might have a 7.5, you might have a 5, you might have a 12. Uh, for most of what we do, we'll use the 10. Um, the total magnification is a combination of the magnification of the objective and the magnification of the ocular. So if you have a four power objective, which I think I have in here now, then yes, in combination with a 10 power ocular, that would be a magnification of 40 times. So four times, 10 times, four times 10 is 40. That's your total magnification. Okay, so one of the things these microscopes do is they just enable you to get a magnified transmitted light uh, view of whatever you're looking at. And what we're going to be looking at are thin sections of rock. These are 30 microns thick if they've been made to standard dimensions. And they that's like a third of the thickness of a typical human hair. Um, and they're thin enough that even mafic, um, or the kind of ferromagnesian minerals you find in a mafic rock like pyroxene uh, or hornblende are, uh, you know, which look jet black in a, uh, in a rock, they are uh, you can see light through them. In fact, you can even see some of the minerals here. These dark specks are probably a combination of biotite and hornblende. And uh, when we look at them through the microscope, we can see right through them. They've got color, um, but they are, you can still see through them. Some minerals, like the ones you guys have been studying in the uh, second third of the class, uh, namely the sulfides and the oxides that are uh, metallic in luster, they tend to be completely opaque. So even when they're only 30 microns thick, you can't see through them, and um, they just always look black. So this kind of microscope isn't so good at looking at those kind of minerals. It's best at, at uh, looking at minerals that will transmit some light. So this is a transmitting microscope. Um, the next thing that's really cool about this, besides just getting a, a zoomed-in view of a thin slice of rock, is that this is a polarizing microscope. I already mentioned that there's a polarizing filter down below, and I'm going to show you kind of what that means. You know, some of you have polarized sunglasses. Um, this is a Polaroid filter here. Uh, 
and it basically lets light go through in one direction. And a proof of that is that, and let me explain what that means. Um, I'm not going to give you an optics lesson right now, but light is a transverse wave. If light is going to you like this, it will actually be vibrating in a plane like this, or like this, or like this, or whatever. And so there's this plane in which the light vibrates, and the polarizing filter will block off light that's not vibrating in a certain direction. So right now, you can see these arrows are showing the direction that light can transmit through a Polaroid, through the polarizing filter. And if I line these both, you know, so, so the, the top one here is letting light go through that's vibrating left to right. We're gonna, I'm gonna start using words like east, west, because that's the way we talk in a microscope. And the lower one is doing the same thing. So if I line these up, they should basically let light through. If I turn them, then they're gonna block the light. And we can see that. Let's try that in a window too. And it's even more dramatic. Where we're looking at natural light. So if you come over here, Aiko, then we can get the uh, that bright face of the building there. Yeah, just aim at that. And uh, yeah, so here's the Polaroid filters that are oriented the same direction. But if I turn them, then all the light is blocked. Okay, so we have similar Polaroid filters that are in the microscope. And I'm gonna hold these different ways. So here, here they are oriented, so they're blocking light the same way. I'm gonna twist 190 degrees and then show you how they go in here. One of them's down here like this, and it's always there. You can't retract it. So the light that comes through the microscope is always what we, it's already polarized. We call it plain light, not ordinary light, like P-L-A-I-N, but plain light, P-L-A-N-E, because the polarization restricts the light to be vibrating in just a certain direction. And the other one is retractable, and it's retractable. It's gonna be one of these knobs up here. Actually, it's not a knob, it's this one here. On some microscopes, it might be a knob, but um, when you insert it like that, you're basically inserting that second Polaroid filter, and that should completely block the light. You might think, why would that be useful? Because if you're completely blocking the light, then you have nothing to look at. <laughs> it would just be black, right? But no, check this out. Minerals can twist the light. And this is what a polarizing petrographic microscope really takes advantage of. And that's the fact that all these minerals, all the quartzes and feldspars and micas and horn blending here, even some titanite and some maybe rutile, um, these minerals will twist the light. So that, and they'll twist different frequencies, different amounts. And that's, again, I'm not gonna give you a lesson on that. That's actually coming up a few weeks ahead. But I will show you the effect of that. When the light gets twisted, it's basically like saying, you know, if light comes through a filter like this and it's allowed to vibrate left, right, let's say it comes, it comes through the filter and it's vibrating left, right. But if the mineral twists a certain wavelength of light, a certain amount, then when you put this other filter in, you know, suppose that light gets actually twisted exactly 90 degrees, then when you put this other filter in, it will block all the light that didn't get twisted, but that light that did get twisted will pass right through. So let me just prove to you that minerals can do that. You don't even need a microscope to see this. Eagle, let's do the same thing we did before. Well, I'll, I'll ask you to kind of aim at the, uh, the side of the building that's really bright there. That's gonna be like our light source. And I'm going to, there we have a thin section with our, our bright side of the building light source. And I'll put this filter here behind it. 
Now here, I'm not blocking any, oh, that's not what I wanna do. It's one of our beautiful quartz monzonites. I didn't break it. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm gonna twist one of these and it'll go like this and it will block the light. And you can see, oh, whoops, I did it in the wrong way. I have to do it on the other side. Ha ha, there. So here it is, now I, I'm sandwiching the thin section between the Polaroid filters and I turn it and you can see surrounding the thin section, it goes black, but where the thin section is, excuse me, where the thin section is, the, um, the light is, you can actually see light through. And if I rotate the thin section, you'll see amazing things happen. Some are colorful, most are gray. The grays are quartzes and feldspars and so forth. So your microscope is going to be doing the same thing, except you're going to be able to look at it in a magnified kind of a way. And that is going to allow us to determine much more than just some physical properties of minerals like hardness and streak, but we'll actually be able to use these microscopes to determine optical properties of minerals. And those will help us to key out unknown minerals, just like we used physical properties on a hand sample to key out unknown minerals as well. Um, we can also determine very interesting things like whether a mineral is orthorhombic or monoclinic. Um, you can even say things about the composition of the mineral because different, um, when the composition of a mineral changes, you know, let's say the proportion of iron to magnesium in an olivine, when it changes, it'll change the optical properties of the mineral. So in a hand sample, you'd be able to say, oh, it's olivine, but in a uh, thin section, you might be able to see, oh, it's especially iron rich or more magnesium rich. Um, so that's the end of this video. In the next one, I'm gonna show you how all the uh, various, what the various uh, parts of the microscope are that you uh, will need to use to do all these things. So um, take a little break and then tune into video number two.